Swami Vishnudevananda tours South India and his mother speaks. We will touch that. Our own beloved Guru Swamji was born in such an atmosphere in 1927. The son of Devaki Amma, now known as Swami Shiva Sharananda Madhiji, who resides at the ashram in Nairdan, where she is loved by all. Madhiji is an embodiment of Indian spiritual culture and heritage. And even now, at her advanced age, one can find her daily reading Vedas, doing puja, and attending satsang. Her health is strong, and she is active daily. Swamji met Master at the young age of 17. He was barely out of school and had spent a short period in the army. When he met the great Master, he transformed him into Vishnu Devananda. Destined to bring a sense of balance and harmony to a troubled modern world. Recently, after having spent 30 years in the West, Swamji has turned his attention to India and opened the Shivananda Yoga Danvantri Ashram in Nairdan. Here, the principles of yoga and Vedanta, as taught by Swami Shivananda, are given daily. Once a year, in January, there is a yoga teacher's training course, which is attended by many students from India as well as from abroad. It is an intensive course in which all the fundamentals in both theory and practice of yoga and Vedanta are taught to the students to give them a firm foundation in the spiritual path. An extremely practical course that enables the student to both practice and understand inwardly the old teachings of India. Master Shivananda's teachings can be summed up in a few words. Serve, love, give, purify, meditate and realize. Swamji has brought his five principles of radiant health and happiness, proper exercise, proper relaxation, proper breathing, proper diet, positive thinking and meditation. Coupled with the truths of Vedanta, these teachings are a dynamic source of inspiration to young people in this modern age of rush and turmoil, ignorance and misunderstanding. Practicing yoga and Vedanta, they can find peace and happiness, happiness amidst daily life. Swamji constantly exhorts people to behold the Atman or the Self within, 
to detach from infatuation with body and all its trappings. And in order to realize complete peace and happiness, one should meditate deeply on this Atman or inner self. Traveling around India, Swamiji is often greeted as a Mahatma or Great Soul. Conferences, yagnas or sacrifices are arranged to instill inspiration and faith in people. In the modern age, we are under the threat of nuclear catastrophe. And Swamiji strongly feels that the only antidote is to repeat the name of God. at all times, mentally, to write it as an antidote to nuclear hazards and catastrophe. This ancient ritual or yagna serves to transform the burning nature of fire, burn the ego, and bring about purity rather than destruction. Mantras are chanted, and a spiritual dynamo is created. sending out positive and healing vibrations to the whole world. These evolved rituals have been going on in South India for countless thousands of years. But individuals can simply write or repeat a simple mantra to help still their mind and create a more peaceful vibration in their families, homes, cities, towns and countries. The Shivananda Yoga Danvantri Ashram is founded on the banks of Naya Dam, an irrigation dam in the foothills of the Sehadri Mountains in South India. The buildings were built over a period of more than 20 years by a Vaidya or Ayurvedic physician who then bequeathed the property to Swamiji. It is right in the midst of a verdant jungle. The dam waters are used to irrigate the surrounding paddy or rice fields of the local villages and are dependent upon the monsoon rains. The ashram sits atop a small hill and in the early morning one can hear the sounds of the surrounding jungle awakening. The atmosphere is one of peace and quiet. The ashram is dedicated to the great sage Agastya Muni who is said to reside on that hill known as Agastya Kutam, where he is meditating and maintaining the balance of India. Sage Agastya is also credited with being the founder of the Ayurvedic system of medicine. 
which utilizes many herbs and plants taken from this very jungle itself. The guardian deity of the ashram is the mother goddess and she is worshipped daily in the morning and evening to invoke her blessings and protection for the well-being of the ashram and the inmates. Nearby is Trivandrum, about 50 miles from the ashram. It is the capital of I'm Kerala for the yoga in and Trivandrum. a modern, busy, bustling city. Want to say hello to everyone? With all the noise <laughs> and stress of any city in the world, Swamiji established the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta Center there in order to teach classes both in yoga and meditation to the inhabitants of Trivandrum. There is an Ayurvedic physician in residence and a small clinic operates. Classes are given on a daily basis, taught by both Westerners and Indians alike. In Trivandrum one can see the clash of the new and the old, but somehow as in all of India, they seem to get along side by side and life goes on in a constant harmony. Close to the ashram is the southern tip of India where is situated the Vivekananda Rock Memorial. Upon the rock on which Swami Vivekananda sat for three days and nights meditating and received his vision to reawaken India to her spiritual culture. Here at Kanyakumari, three oceans meet, the Bay of Bengal, the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea. And every Hindu should come to this place at least once in his or her life, bathe in the waters of the ocean, and watch the sunrise and sunset on the same day. Nearby is the Vivekananda Kendra, which has a school for young children, teaching them modern sciences as well as keeping the old traditions of India. When you visit the ashram, don't forget to go and bathe in the ocean at Kanyakumari and receive the blessings of the mother. Kanyakumari back to the ashram is to Chindram, a typical South Indian temple town situated around a temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. This is the place where Anasurya did her penance and attained liberation. Once again, one can sense the clash of modern and old. And once again, somehow, he seemed to go together in a blurry but harmonious clash and emergence of cultures.
the paradox that is India. This is the temple tent surrounded by Brahmin houses. People who are going to the temple come here to bathe before entering into the temple. An ancient practice kept on in the modern age. Driving back to the ashram, or on any Indian road for that matter, can be quite a hair-raising experience for the newly arrived Westerner. The sounds, sights, smells, noise, as well as the seeming lack of any rules of the road, can keep one... We're talking more about it. We'll give you some more literature about it. The ashram teaches the teachings of Swami Shivananda and Swami Vishnu Devananda. Swamiji's principles are taught, proper exercise, proper relaxation, proper breathing, proper diet, positive thinking and meditation. Here the early morning class are doing the sun salute to warm and loosen the body before doing the yoga asanas. This platform is down on the side of the dam and it is a beautiful place to do yoga asanas as one can always hear the jungle sounds coming across the water. A little louder. <laughs> Students are also taught the basics of yogic breathing. <laughs> called pranayama or control over the pranic energy <laughs> through breathing exercises. This is done to bring balance to the pranic system, bringing health to the body as well as psychic advancement. Yogic kriyas or cleansing exercises are also taught cleaning out nasal cavities in order to make the breathing exercises better. The whole digestive system is cleaned as well through vari various kriyas. This one known. Proper diet is vegetarian diet based upon sound principles of nutrition. The food is also quite simple and is eaten in a pure atmosphere. This is the traditional way in India on a banana leaf. Positive thinking and meditation is practiced twice daily in the early morning and evening. Silent meditation is followed by chanting The repetition of devotional chants helps to channel basic emotions such as lust, anger, greed, hatred and jealousy towards higher devotion, compassion and love for God 
and humanity. Thus subtly, over a period of time, the students are slowly transformed in both body, mind and soul. Swami Shivananda and Swamiji stress the need for karma yoga or selfless service as a means to purifying the heart and teaching one to give. The ashram has many opportunities for karma yoga or selfless work. Here in the hot kitchen, over open fires, the simple meals are prepared. Much as they have been done for many thousands of years in the south of India. Students lend a hand, though the cooks are well-trained professionals. Put jaggery or sugar and uh, other medicines. So the ashram we have to put in also the has an Ayurvedic uh, pharmacy. Dr. Rai, so an Ayurvedic and physician, we have to cover the, is preparing the here Chavana Prash. <coughs> or a general a tonic and fortifier. Uh, before we start, the recipe was said to have been handed uh, down uh, by Sage uh, Agastya. Uh, Many uh, ingredients are cooked uh, and blended together for every and then for kept the stored under earth for a period of 40 uh, days, uh, after uh, which uh, the tonic uh, is ready uh, for use. Uh, One uh, tablespoon uh, in the morning uh, and evening in a glass of warm milk. This is the Shivananda Danvantri Danvantri at the ashram is the Indian Mayer god Dan. of medicine and is always invoked before any healing or medicinal work is done. All the medical knowledge is contained in Sanskrit slokas or verses which must be learned. The pharmacy is growing steadily along with the ashram and already about half a dozen preparations are available. Nearby in the local village, Swami is inaugurating the Shivananda Auto Mechanic Institute and the Shivananda Institute of Commerce to help the local villagers raise their standard of living. Beginning with the puja on the engine and the teacher, Swamiji himself gives the first lesson on how pistons work in the engine. Next door is the Shivananda Institute of Commerce, a typing school teaching young village women secretarial skills. Typewriters are blessed. As the young students stand ready, and once again, Swamiji gives the first lesson. Next door is the nursery school, attended by about 40 of the young village children, where they come every day to have meals 
and learn, chants, songs, dances, play games, and of course the basics of arithmetic, reading and writing. After the inaugural functions, of course, comes the feast. People eat sitting in lines on banana leaves. Rice is the staple diet and is served at every meal, often in huge helping. Of course, the children have their own feast. For what would a function be without lots of eating? Guest cottages of the ashram are on the opposite side of the hill to the dam, overlooking rice paddies, coconut trees, and banana plantations. The ashram itself is situated inside the dam property, which has beautiful gardens surrounded with by lush plants as well as some very interesting statues. The ashram cottages were built recently. One can see many of the old methods of doing things in the ashram. Here the dobi or washerman prepares his iron by heating or burning coconut husks and placing the coals inside the iron. Even though tedious and somewhat hot to the fingers, he seems to be able to do a much better job than many modern irons can do. The cooks prepare the food simply. What are you doing? Taking time to clean it well. Here, flour is prepared for chapatis for the evening meal. Dr. Shivananda Advaryu is visiting the ashram. He is an eye surgeon from Gujarat in the northwest of India and is the longtime devotee of Swami Shivananda. Dr. Advaryu and his helpers travel around the country giving eye camps, mostly removing cataracts, enabling people with defect of vision to see again. Even at the advanced age of over 80 years, he is able to do more than 150 cataract operations per day. Held in camps in different localities, Dr. Advaryu might help about a thousand people a week as he travels throughout India. The operation is simple, taking a short period of time. In the ashram, one can see many of India's old cultural heritages. This is known as Kalari Payet, a martial art form 
from which karate and other trace their ancestry. Here the practitioner demonstrates the salute and warm-up exercises while speaking an ancient Malayali tongue. The ashram is visited by many musicians and artists. Here, Sima Ben sings classical South Indian music, known as Carnatic music. This is devotional music utilizing many different tones and vocal ranges and one must train from an early age to be able to master it. Through the influence of the movies, the youth of India often turns towards other forms. This young man is proficient in karate and has become the karate champion of South India. Natural life is never very far in the ashram and there is a great respect for the wildlife that lives in and around the ashram. Traditionally performed in the temples and helped to show people how to live properly and to be inspired by the ideals of the great sages and saints. This is Bharatanatyam or the temple dance. Many intricate eye and hand movements as well as bodily gestures combine to tell stories of devotion and love for God. But Kerala is most famous for the Katakali a vigorous dance mind, often going on all night during the great Katakali festivals that are held every year in Kerala. The costumes are elaborate, the makeup taking many hours to apply. Music is usually only supplied by a drum or two as well as some vocal.
Near to the ashram is the ever-present jungle. Here a small shrine stands at the entrance to the domain of the great sage Agastya. Many pilgrims pass this way en route to the peak of Agastya, where they spend a night in meditation, returning to their homes later, filled with energy and strength gained from the pilgrimage. The jungle has an awesome stillness. The penetrating silence which slowly enters into one's heart. February is a popular time of the year for a pilgrimage. One comes across many pilgrims en route to Agastya Kutam. His presence is everywhere felt and refreshes the tired and weary pilgrims as they cross through the rivers and streams and mountain paths. This is a timeless land. The spiritual energy can be felt in the earth itself. She's done merely prostrating before the Gurudev. She is demonstrating in her action. So Dr. Adhiri came all the way at 81 years old. He did all his duty and gone this morning. And that shows that devotion to the man. Swamji is once again departing going back to the ways that he has a final message for all. That's all I had to give. So devotion is not just physical devotion. If you're really devoted to me and to Gurudev Mission, work for him, sacrifice your comforts and conveniences, everything you'll get. That's the final instruction. Then you will get everything. Okay, Dr. Sapini, take care of everybody. Then I'll be very happy. Okay? Mother Jika. Okay. One more.